Our gospel reading today is the story of the Samaritan woman at the well, and it is a very long reading. And so I asked some volunteers today to help read this in a narrative form. And I will be reading the part of the narrator. I'll be reading the part of Simon and Andrew, all of the disciples. I'll be reading the part of Jesus. And I'll be reading the part of the Samaritan woman, the hero of this story who has no name. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and flocks drank of it? Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water water gushing up to eternal life. Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Go call your husband and come back. I have no husband. You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Your worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all these things to us. I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman. But no one said, What do you want, or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him. Rabbi, eat something. I have food to eat that you do not know about. Surely no one has brought him something to eat. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do not you say, four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap for which you did not labor. Others have labor and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. 
He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there for two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you all. You can take your seats. I wonder if my kiddos are back there and would like to come up for a children's message. <clears throat> come on up, little ones. All righty. Well, come and take a seat, kiddos. Come and take a seat. All righty. Hey, Charlie. Come sit with your brothers. Well, kiddos, are any of you thirsty? <coughs> you, you are, you're thirsty, Charlie and Lucas? Yeah? What do you think the most thirsty you've ever been is? Milk? Yeah, okay. What, what, do you, can you remember any times you've been really thirsty? What, what, when have you been really thirsty? February 17th. Wow. Okay, what happened on, you think so? Okay, Lucas, can you remember church services, you're thirsty? Well, you know what? Anyone worshiping with us today, live stream can sit with uh, a cup of coffee in their hand and not be thirsty during wor worship. Any other times you've been really, really thirsty? Hmm. Have you been thirsty when you've been outside playing a lot? Uh, have you been thirsty when you uh, forgot your water bottle? Every day at school. What kind of things do you want to drink when you're really thirsty? Water. 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 What do you drink when you're thirsty, Charlie? Milk. Okay, milk is really good. It's, it's, it's one of the first things we need in our lives. Okay, well, yeah. Well, I just read a story. Water. Yeah, water. I just read a story about Jesus and a woman. And this woman had, um, had been told she didn't have much worth. And so she kind of distanced herself from people because she didn't want to feel bad. Um, and there's sometimes people in our lives that make us feel that way. We just don't want to be around because they make us feel bad. But this woman <coughs> came to the well um, in her city where they got water, because they don't have faucets at that time when Jesus was living on the earth. And so they came to a well at noon when nobody else would be there because it was really hot at that time. And she was thirsty for water. And Jesus was there. And do you think Jesus helped her get water out of the bottom of that well? You think he would, but he said, no, there's something even better than this water, he said to this woman. He said, there's something that I can give you called living water. And with this water, you'll never be thirsty again. You'll never be thirsty, and you won't have to, to even, um, you won't have to feel as though you're empty. And this water, he said, it doesn't come from a well. It comes from me. Is that kind of hard to understand? Yeah, it is a little hard to understand. You know, I was thinking, whenever I'm thirsty, I like to have um, water, but also Powerade. That is something that when you're sick, you really like to have to replenish your body. And some people might even call it living water, because it really fills you up and refills your body when it's thirsty. Well, Jesus is better than all of that. Jesus gives us water when our hearts are thirsty, when our hearts are needing something more that nothing else can quench. So I, can, I, can I ask you guys, how about a time, how about a time when you have felt lonely? Can you think about a time you felt lonely, all alone, or a time that you felt like people don't think you're worth anything or don't even want you around? can think about a time. 
I bet we all could think of a time like that. And in that time, Jesus offers us something. Not just water, but love and a promise that he'll be with us. You know, I bet you could tell me, of your body, how much percent do you think your body is of water? More than half. Water is so important. It's something we have in us all the time. And Jesus says, I'm that water. Not just in your body, like you get from a faucet, but I'm in your heart always. And you need me. And we do. So today I want you all to think about how you're thirsty. Not for water or milk or Powerade, but thirsty for God to be in your... You want Powerade now? Sorry. (laughs) Okay. No, you don't have it now, but we have Jesus, okay? So, we are going to say a prayer, and then I'm going to go to the font and sprinkle you all with water. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, so today, let's, let's say a prayer now, okay? Lucas, let go. Okay, here we go. We're, we're going we're gonna to fold our hands. We're going to fold our hands. This is not the social distancing we're talking about. Okay, here we are. Let's fold our hands and repeat after me, okay? Good morning, God. Good morning, God. We love you. We love you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. And always being with us. And always being with us. Amen. All right, you all can head back to wherever you're sitting. Hold on. Come here. Come and, come and fill this living water. Luke, just come down from there. Okay. Come on. Head back to Dad. Okay, boys? <clears throat> Wasn't sure how that would work. <laughs> Those boys. Well, how many of you all have been practicing your 20 seconds for washing your hands? Everybody's hand goes up. So uh, I've been doing the Lord's Prayer whenever I wash my hands. To say the Lord's Prayer, it's about 20 seconds long. My kids do the ABCs. Are there any little rhymes or limericks you all say to help guide you through that 20 seconds of washing your hand? Happy birthday. Oh, yeah, happy birthday twice. Okay, that's great. Any other tools that you all have used to get your 20 seconds in? Austin, any? There's been some funny songs that you all might have seen, but it's important to wash your hands. And I found that I am spending a lot more time with water running over my hands than I ever did before. It's a good lesson that I think we've all learned. And today's about water. They were talking about water. But our world is now not only trying to uh, wash our hands more, like I said, we are being asked to practice social distancing. These are words you've, you've heard. And it's very easy to feel isolated. This new practice of social distancing can even make an introvert thirsty for some companionship. Well, in our gospel, we actually read about social distancing The woman at the well came at noon, in the heat of the day, when there wouldn't be many people there, to distance herself from her community. But Jesus showed up unexpectedly to her anyway. And this is the news that we need to hear right now. In the story preceding this one in the Gospel of John, we read about Nicodemus. Now these two stories stand side by side but as polar opposites. The woman has no name, whereas Nicodemus is one of the most recognizable names in Scripture. The woman comes during the day. Nicodemus comes at night. The woman is someone who declares and testifies to who Jesus is and how that changes her, whereas Nicodemus is someone who questions and even hides who Jesus is to himself and to his peers. The woman has shame. Nicodemus is respected. The woman is a Samaritan. Nicodemus is a Jew. The woman is an outsider. Nicodemus is part of the innermost circle of the leaders in Jerusalem. She wanted, 
She needed to isolate herself. But she is the unlikely hero in our story. Her identity had been wrapped up in her life story, in her hardships and her shame. This doesn't matter to Jesus. Jesus showed up anyways. When Jesus comes to her, he offers her not regular water, but living water. And we know the importance of water. Our world is filled with it, as are our bodies. Billions of dollars were spent looking for water on Mars, because if there is water, there would be life. And we come looking for that water. My uncle Glenn says that in these unusual times, we learn what we really need. We learn about who we really put our lives, in, into whose hands we really put our lives. We don't need athletes. We don't need actors. What we need are plumbers and electricians and a lot of toilet paper, apparently. And above all, we need living water. But in a time of social distancing, it will be more difficult to seek out that living water. But then our gospel reminds us that Jesus will always find us. We will find that well with living water in worship, in this place or in our homes. We will find that well bursting forth with living water in the new relationships we will build in this time of new communication with each other. We will find that well with living water springing up in prayer and devotion. If one were to try and make lemonade out of this sour time, it would be that our hearts are forced to seek out that well of living water outside of our church building, outside of our norms for worship and faith building. That is the lemonade that we receive from this time. Zion Williamson, did I say that right, Austin? Okay, Zion Williamson is a young basketball player, just 19 years old, recently drafted into the NBA. And this young man announced that for the next 30 days, he will be covering the salaries of all of the arena workers where his team plays. He wrote, the people of New Orleans have been incredibly welcoming and supportive since I was drafted last June. And some of the most special people I have met are those who work at Smoothie King Center, the arena where he plays. These are the folks who make our games possible. He went on to write about how many of those are the same people who are still recovering from Hurricane Katrina. This young man didn't inspire us by his three-pointers or his defensive skills. He's inspired so many by his generosity and kindness. To those people, many might have overlooked or ignored or forgotten. Now, we might not have millions of dollars to give, but what does living water look like in our lives? the living water that we receive, but also that which we can offer to those in our world. What do we need, though, that only Jesus can give? Because we, like the women, came to the well, come to the well at noon, our sins out for all to see and exposed. About uh, eight years ago, when our oldest son, Lucas, was baptized, he was baptized at our at my seminary out in Columbia, South Carolina. And the font there, I've talked about, the font is, is uh, sunken down into the, into the floor of the sanctuary. You have to step down into this, into this well as if you're stepping down into a grave and then emerging out. And this little baby, just a few months old, was pretty well behaved. But the font there is also a big, giant uh, metal bowl and so it was filled with nice warm water. But at the time of his baptism, when the pastor, one of our colleagues, our peers, um, baptized him, we stripped him down, naked, not even a diaper. It was a little scary. 
but he was fully exposed. Not just his cute little butt, but his, his soul. It was a reminder for all of us gathered there that when we come to God, when we come to this living water, we come and Jesus knows everything about us. He knows who we are, he knows what we'll do, and he knows what we can be. Outside on our sign is the, is the phrase, Jesus knows me, this I love. That's what we hear today from this Samaritan woman. Come and see a man who's told me everything I've ever done. And what she doesn't say is, and he loves me still. That's what we get to see in this scripture today. And so we too come down to the font of living water to see a man who comes to us to tell us everything we've ever done and who offers us forgiveness and life. I've talked a little bit about this, this labyrinth we have taped on our floor for the season of Lent. This Lenten season we're, we're talking about prayer and journey and how those are in harmony. And so we have this labyrinth of um, prayer and walking and moving. And it's disappointing that for the greater part of our Lenten season, uh, people won't be here to walk this. So we'll leave it up maybe all summer, maybe forever. But we walk this labyrinth and we, we journey to the center. And when we get to the center, we find this well this well that offers us living water. And we find this light that breaks into the darkness of our world. And then from this place of new life and hope, we, we walk back out. We walk back out into the world with trust and with hope. And that is the good news in our scripture today. No matter where we are, here in this place, in our living room with the smartphone in our hand, or however we're worshiping, we know that God goes with us, gives us living water when we are fearful, when we are parched, when we are thirsty. And then we can say, come and see. Come and see a man who told me everything about my life and my eternal life, who offers me more than I could ever imagine, who knows me. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we come to you thirsty, parched in these times of uncertainty in our world, when there is fear and confusion and we trust that you go with us. You go with us in our times of isolation. You meet us and, be, and are present with us. And you come to us in hospitals and in grocery stores and in our living rooms. Help us to trust in that living water that will give us life when we are afraid of death. Bless us as we journey, knowing that you are with us. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen.